Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Twice on this Sunday, this time Kovu decided that he wants to join up. That's Kovu, by the way, K-O-V-U is his name. <coughs> it's after one of the characters in Lion King 2 that one of my daughters was obsessed with. And he's just, he's actually more of a dog than a cat. All right, the reason why I'm doing a second video today is because... I want to explain specifically about blocking in the atmosphere. What is What does he mean when he says there's blocking in the atmosphere? Well, think of what a block is. A block prevents something from going from point A to point B. And the um, subject in question or the item in question will have to find a way around the block. If you can't go through a block, you try and go around the block to get from point A to point B. Now, I'm going to show you what is going to transpire in the upper atmosphere when you have a blocking situation. And this will be a useful reference to when we have it in the future. Blocks affect different parts of the United States in different ways. In particular, it affects the eastern part of the United States because it displaces cold air to the south <coughs> from Canada into uh, the eastern uh, part of the U.S. and depending on the time of year it can be problematic and depending on the position of the block it can be problematic. Now what we're seeing here is probably something that maybe resembles a bit more of, an, of a normal flow. Uh, it isn't exactly uh, normal. When I say normal everything wants to just kind of move from west to east and move along. Now there are disturbances all along the jet stream. Um, and you can see one. Now, this is from a few days ago by the way. And you can see, uh, you know, there's an upper low that's sitting uh, to the south uh, in southern, just south of Greenland. <clears throat> there's a ridge of high pressure off the co west coast of Europe. So you, you, the ridges in the atmosphere are what we look at in terms of uh, trying to see these blocks form. Because they, if the ridges are the, they tend to hold everything in place. Everything wants to move from west to east, and that ridge is kind of is, is, is sort of the wall of resistance. Now, as we moved through this week, and I'm giving you a hemispheric view here so you can see what happens over the top. Uh, we are at Friday at this point, and here's our weekend, of course. Now, you're going to start to see some wholesale changes developing. Notice that ridge that's in Western Europe gets stronger and stronger over time. Gradually, uh, an upper high forms and closes off and that upper high moves its way toward Greenland. Now what does that do? This is our block and at this point we are looking at um, Friday, May 5th. So, <clears throat> But we can use this as a tool as I said going forward to explain how blocks work. But uh, here's that upper high right in there and you know winds are clockwise around high so we're talking about the winds aloft here and that high is your wall. So look what's happened to the jet stream, the overall jet stream pattern in the United States as a result. The result is that you wind up with a deep trough in the east, a ridge in the west. That is a signature for perhaps some storminess in the eastern part of the United States. Depending on the time of year and the position of the block, uh, it, it, it can mean uh, for snowy conditions in the northeast into the mid-Atlantic states. But the block is not the only factor. I, I, I have mentioned this a couple of times and I'm going to mention it again. The presence of a block does not guarantee a certain weather outcome. You still have the usual forecast dilemmas that you're going to have. Um, are storms going to be far enough north? Are they going to be too far east? Are they going to be too far west? And of course this makes a difference between in the winter time it's going to make a difference between precipitation type in all seasons, it may mean uh, for precipitation whether you get it at all. Uh, also, because the atmosphere is going to be stretched to an extreme, it's quite likely that there are going to be some areas under a blocking situation that could wind up with extreme amounts of precipitation. So this is something we're going to have to consider. Also, bear in mind that if you are on the right side of the block, um, Say you're in the west, you're in a ridge position here, so the weather here is quite nice. So you can have a blocking pattern, and if it sets up correctly um, or incorrectly, you can have the weather you, you are looking for, or perhaps 
you might be looking for something different. But this pretty much is how blocks work. Um, they put up, it's sort of like putting up a construction zone and shutting off a road, and you're going to have to find another road for uh, to get around. And in this case, it's shutting off the road of energy that likes to move from west to east and instead uh, forces it to move further south around the block. And blocks can last for a few days. They can last for a few weeks sometimes. In this particular instance, this block seems to want to last for a long time because it, it's going deep into the long range period. And you can still see it present here up in uh, Canada in Labrador. And you still have this displaced jet stream further to the south. So that's just sort of a little lesson on how blocks work. And I think for what I'm going to start doing from time to time is we see different weather patterns. I'll, you know, put up these, uh, you know, explainers and you can um, take a look at them whenever you want to refresh yourself on uh, how what exactly all of this means in this great puzzle of ours that is weather. Have a great day and uh, don't forget to look for my latest videos on a daily basis and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is absolutely free. Just hit the subscribe button on my channel page and you'll get notified every time a new video is posted.